Hello, everybody in the chess world. So today I'm going to follow up my, well, previous section of getting lucky in chess. So, well, today I have this example. This is a position that I had in a tournament. As usual, no names as my opponent might not want to be mentioned. Here, well, I was white. It was my turn to move. I am, well, not 100% sure, but let us say pretty sure that I did not play the, last, the best move here. I played uh, D takes E6. So initially, my opponent reacted correctly. He played uh, Knight takes E3, getting rid of my good bishop. And, you know, I don't have the pair of bishops anymore. Normal chest, queen takes E3. So here we'll, it will, well, we'll see the moment where he made a mistake because um, the best move was for black was Knight C6. This is quite logical because, well, let us go back one, one turn. I do have this past e6 pawn, extra pawn, which is pretty cool. But yeah, well, that is why precisely knight c6 was the right move. Not only black is just developing a piece, but well, they're just putting pressure on my knight. They just want to get rid of this knight. So to be able to then take the pawn with the queen, either the queen, maybe the rook and take it. But this was the, the right way to go. And well, it, it seems to me that my opponent actually saw that, but he kind of got greedy, maybe. He wanted to make uh, a little improvement on the variation. So he played the intermediate move, bishop e4, which is not a good move because it'll give him some tactical problems that we'll see. So, well, I play queen e2, and only now he played knight e6. But it's different now. Because, well, this will be the first moment where I'll ask you to possibly don't think, you know, what to play with white here. And yeah, well, maybe the move I played was, might seem obvious, right? I played a three and yeah, well, this bishop is trapped. But my opponent obviously had seen that and he saw well, but he can just take my knight. He's threatening my queen, so I don't have time to do anything but taking that knight, as I did. And now, well, he kind of, well, he took the pawn on, on d4 with check. And again, this is something that we we had both calculated, but we were, yeah, trying to, to outsmart each other. Okay, the first detail is that, yeah, the knight on c6, when it came down here and took this knight, yeah, well, he had, he had opened this escape route for, for the bishop, but of course, after pawn takes, if my opponent had played bishop b7 after d5, well, now I have protected pass e, e pawn on the sixth rank. This is, well, obviously a big advantage for white. So, as I said before, he went queen takes d4 check. What, well, and bishop b3 was the obvious answer, right? I mean, after this move, I'm just threatening both the bishop on e4 and the queen on d4. Again, he had seen this and he blitzed out his answer. Queen d3. So he thought, well, now his queen is not, not, no longer attacked and he can just, well, retreat his, his bishop next move if I don't do anything particular. And if I take the queen, well, the bishop will recapture the queen at the same time that it is escaping the, the attack of the pawn. So, well, now is a much more important moment for you to try and find the best move for white. So, pause to beat and think. Well, I remember being really angry after uh, at myself uh, after the game because I had seen some ideas of trapping his queen, but I was lazy. I just played at the laziest, seemingly winning move. So the best move here is queen e1. Again, trapping the queen. I mean, look at black's queen. There is no possibility to go anywhere for her. You know, it's like he, she's trapped. Everywhere, every single square is controlled. And, well, what is the threat? Rook c3. There's nothing to do against this move. I think I even kind of sort of, sort of saw that in calculation. And Yeah, but in the end, when I was in this position, I just played queen takes e3, which is, well, double question mark. I mean, let us begin by, by the fact that anything that is not queen e1 is kind of at least one question mark. And this is double question mark because I'm not even winning a piece. However, and yeah, to be able to make it clear why this is the second part of getting lucky in chess. Well, because I had I didn't show you the, the opening and the initial play, but okay, I had played some weak moves, but nothing too serious. Now, 
on move 19 was the first time in the whole game where I made a double question mark move. And what was my opponent's answer? To resign. Again, yeah, this is what I, I wanted to show you. Yeah, this is getting lucky in chess again. So, okay, why did my opponent resign? Because, well, he thought that after recapturing the queen and rook fd1, again, his bishop has no escape. Or let us say the only safe square for that bishop will be at e2, but after rook d2, that's it. And, well, while we were signing the score sheet and everything I showed him, I, I told him, well, you're not losing a piece. You, you actually missed this f4 resource, which is, well, yeah, attacking my bishop and at the same time offering a, a retreating diagonal for his bishop. So, yeah, of course, the obvious line, which will be the correct one and what I, I was actually calculating before he resigned was rook takes, pawn takes, and rook takes. And But, again, I did not win a piece. I, I, I just, just won a pawn. Pretty cool one, pass pawn on e6. But even computers agree that this position is not 100% loss for black. I mean, this is a clear advantage, close to winning, but not, I don't know how close to win. And, well, the options for black are several. I mean, rook a8, the most natural move, it's it's considered by the computer as, as it is, I don't know, rook f5 was considered by the computer, you know, just maybe activating the rook, maybe coming here, maybe attacking this, these guys. Rook f4 is another move that computers were considering. Maybe, yeah, you know, just glancing a little bit at this pawn, maybe blocking this f pawn with whom, you know, one, one day maybe that pawn will want to go like, yeah, f4, f5 to protect this other one. I mean, there was still a lot of play here. I mean, this is not winning. So, okay, uh, again, su I was super lucky. He didn't even, yeah, he, he even miss, missed f4 but yeah i guess well in in what could be some sort of long calculation let us say from this initial position well when he he realized that when he reached this position he had missed this you know rook fd1 and and he missed this f4 so okay he resigned and i kind of understand but again how lucky can one can one person get right you know first and only moment where I made a double question mark move and my opponent answers by with, with resignation. I mean, that that is clearly lucky. So, well, um, I'll ask you as, as usual to like the video. If, if you like it, just click on, on the like, comment, and please subscribe. And well, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next time.